I don't suppose you could give me a sample of your brain tissue for study purposes. Hmm, that sounds reasonable. Welcome to the Academy. We're going to study the prophecy missions, the Zeratul missions. We'll begin by recapping the conventional understanding of Sarah Kerrigan. Okay, a little parkour move there. Zeratul's searching an old temple for fragments of a prophecy, and he's raising heck with his lightsaber, because he doesn't like the Zerg defiling the place. I knew you'd find your way here, eventually. Your very presence Ooh, look at those Italian boots. Zerg are really into that. Do you hear them, Zeratul? Whispering from the stars. The galaxy will burn. They're coming. Perhaps. Oh, Zeratul's been when learning from Death Eaters. At any rate, that's the standard understanding of Sarah Kerrigan, the Queen of Blades. Bad, bad vixen. But as Zeratul progresses through these missions, he learns something and it troubles him. And he takes that information to James Rayner. Meanwhile, here is Jimmy drinking as usual. Because that concerns his crew, it makes them wonder how competent he is. He's gone somewhere else to do that in privacy. In fact, he's left the Hyperion and gone to the Satellite of Love. Oh, Jimmy, I wouldn't go through too many more of those doors if I were you. I get the feeling Dr. Hansen's experiments pale compared to what- Whoa, whoa, what's that? Four years. You show up out of nowhere. Time is oh. short. You must understand. The answers you seek lie within. Study it well. The fate of creation hangs in the balance. Nice to see you too. Eon crystals before. Supposedly they allow you to relive another person's memories. If his era tools uncovered, he was desperate for me to see it too. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, almost as good as those famous words, famous last words. Watch this! At any rate, the Prophecy missions divert from the standard Terran storyline to go through four missions in which Protoss Dark Templar Zeratul is trying to discover and decipher an ancient prophecy. Kerrigan is trying to beat him to it. Greater problems arise. There are no credits to earn in these missions, but there are a lot of research points. Since you don't need to wait for particular units or armory upgrades to use this to go through these missions, but you can get a lot of research points that can help you in all the other missions, it's best to get to this as quickly as you can. You should do the Zeratul missions as early as possible in the campaign, and in other words, you're going to have to have completed the dig, and to complete the dig mission, you're going to have completed eight other missions, including Smash and Grab. You can go to the Team Liquid campaign webpage to get an idea of what you have to do to do each individual mission, what the prerequisites are, and that'll explain this a little bit more. Now to do these particular missions, you don't go to the bridge and use the star map. You go to laboratory and click on the crystal, and that'll get you going. First mission, Whispers of Doom. 
This is a dungeon crawl. You need to bring Zeratul to the three Zel Naga shrines to collect pieces of the prophecy. That's the uh, first objective. Sure and then get him to the room. Void Seeker to escape Kerrigan Swarm. And if you do that, you keep him alive, which are the other two objectives. I will fulfill my call. So here's Zeratul moving along. And here he covers the very this first important skill you need to work on here, which is blink. Can you can blink across caverns, you can blink side. back and forth across the open spaces. Uh, that's an important we part of this campaign. The next Spore is using the void prisons. prisons. Void crawlers, void crawlers? Void. Spore crawlers can see Zeratul soaking overseers, and he can use the void prison to stun both of them until he or a stalker can take them out. And since he's permanently cloaked, life is tough for these Zerg now. Honor Let's commands. see what he does. He has a puzzle. Basically, this is a sniper mission in a sense. He needs to very slowly, carefully, and methodically figure out each puzzle. What to stun, what not to stun, what to hit first, um, and so forth. And if you take this slow, and primarily use Zeratul, then you'll get where you need to go. But the fact is that after Zeratul gets a little bit through here, here he's to the first shrine and get a bit of prophecy. He'll get a few friends. He'll get some stalkers. That doesn't mean you have a force you can go attack with. The, first the stalkers the are anti-air and occasionally that'll come in handy, but still, mostly use Zeratul and Zeratul's abilities to get around. Here's the map of where you'll be getting around. I don't know that this is at all helpful, though. Here are the stalkers. Even with the stalkers, he's going to leave them behind, go down, trigger some enemy units, stun the overseer, smash all the little zerg he can, and then since the rest won't, best, best, best won't be triggered until they get down here, then everybody will fight. Now, although for a lot of this mission you'll be doing things like using a stalker to lure some zerg away from the main group and into an ambush, what we're coming up here is just a straightforward butt kicking. Father Gavin, be aware that the optional achievements in this mission are to complete the objectives, but also to complete on normal with three or more stalkers uh, remaining, and to complete it on hard with Zeratul suffering no life damage. You can have shield damage, but you can't let that get beyond shield damage, which replenishes the actual life damage. It is an honor, Great One. Yep, sure is. All right, our stalkers are on high ground, taking out the brood lords there. Zeratul has just moved beyond range of vision, and so he is free to run around without the Zerg being able to see him. He's going to smash these. As the worms come up, he'll hit the Nidus worms. Did I mention that the trick all the way through here is frequent saves? And it looks like it's going to be a wondrous victory. Along the way, you'll have uncovered some, or you'll have come across some hatcheries. There are three hatcheries on this map, and bonus objectives involve destroying all of them. At this point, you're near the third shrine. You're probably wondering where that hatchery is. Where is it? Well, it's kind of hidden. If you go over here, and you think, I'm going to blink up to that ledge and see what's there. You go down here, and you look over and you see, oh, there's a little patch of something. Let's go over there, and keep exploring, you'll find it. And you'll have to clear out more than you're seeing here. Now, we've blinked a couple of stalkers down. You can see they can see from the bottom. Might be something to consider there if you want everybody to avoid those broodlings. Blink the stalkers down, let Zeratul be vision, and shoot from the bottom. But you don't have to. Anyway, you're eventually now going to finish this up. Blink everybody back down to the bottom. Oops. Boo-boo. Run up to the th third shrine will not and get the very forgotten. last part of the campaign here, of the mission here, where you are trying to get to the Void Seeker. At this point, you are running for your life. Do not stop to fight anything. Don't try to fight anything. Just run and run and run. You'll get to some rocks, blink past the rocks. You should be able to blink past some of them. You may have to wait a bit at some. And just get to the Void Seeker. That's all you're doing there. As long as you run like mad, you'll finish that mission. Oh, you're going to go see the Preserver of Zakul? Okay, well, let's see what's on TV. We have a very special guest today, Crown Prince Valerian. Thank you so much for joining us, Highness. 
Thank you, Kate. It's wonderful to be here. Let me get right to the question on everyone's mind. Is there anyone special in your life right now? Truth be told, Kate, I've had a crush on you for many years. Oh, stop. <laughs> but in all seriousness, with the Zerg invasion, there's little time for such things. I've been studying military tactics under General Warfield, and whatever spare time I have is devoted to statecraft. It's my goal to be the best Emperor our people could ask for. When the time comes, of course. Wonderful. Now I've got two of them to worry about. All right, and on to... A Sinister Turn. Zeratul is now off to show his prophecy fragments to the preservers so that they can figure what they mean, figure out what they mean. But things take a turn to the left. Here we're going to try to power up three Protoss buildings and free the three preservers. We get our base powered up quickly, the one he finds when he gets here. Um, begin mining, begin building a bit of a force. We don't even have to have much of a force to speak of to go do something that we'll get a hint for in just a moment. We're also going to want to put some photon cannons out near the two ramps. Let's see what's happening here. A map. Here's our base. There are some buildings we need to power up near it. There's a third building we need to power up, but there's a Protoss base by it. We'll need some level of force to go down and take out that base. There's a base that unless we're trying to get the achievement, we can ignore down here. It's a pretty strong base. And then the base we need to get through to save the preservers. Okay, so we're getting a little bit here in the way of upgrades there are also. There abandoned structures in this place that we can make use of. They merely need their power restored by the construction of a few well-placed pylons. Where could they be? Can you show us? Thank you. So as we slowly drone up... You seek of a higher power now, Dark One. Well, this Hulaga needs an attitude adjustment. Slowly build our force, we'll be able to start accomplishing some objectives here. We're not going to try to free the preservers till the very end. Truly, something foul has taken hold of this sacred place. Let's see what I am here in the shadows. But we can begin trying to get the bonus objectives by powering up abandoned structures I since we can use those abandoned Chris. structures to build forces and when we power them up, we get a few forces for free. And that's always a good deal. So all we have to do is go over, visit them. Depending on the level, there either will not be a force defending them or a small force. Um, bring a probe behind us, put a pylon in. And then, since it's possible that these satellite structures would get attacked, you can consider putting a um, photon cannon near them for some temporary defense also. Uh-oh. Hmm. Protoss and Zerg hybrid. Who created this atrocity? Come, my slaves. The time has come to give me your strength. Your lives are forfeit. Oh, so oh, maybe we should just quit now. Stay. Or we could take the don't worry, be happy approach. So if you look on the mini map, you see this weirdo hybrid Mar on his way up. Or her up as the case may be, it's way up. We can be attacked by one ramp or another and we can tell right here um, which ramp it'll be. It's the one we're looking at here on the right. Occasionally, the game will have a glitch and We'll see that here in a moment. Um, the hybrid will just kind of get stuck there. But usually the hybrid will come on up and attack. Every time the hybrid attacks, it gets a little more powerful, and eventually the hybrid gets some spells also. So you're going to want to build your wall of photon cannons and build your forces and be ready for this. At the same time, you're also going to be building your forces for other purposes. Upgrade complete. Stay 
usually after the hybrid attacks, a few of these on Protoss come in and get you. But we're going to go down to this other base here, take out the other base, and then power up uh, the, I think it's Templar Archives down there. Now, we're tired of farting around, so we're going to attack the main base and try to get through to the preservers. And you can do this one of two ways. You can go in with a force, and if you do, it probably better be a bigger one than this. But this is actually just our leftover force from attacking that other base. Our main plan here is just to run our Dark Templars through their base to this area here, where there is no detection. They do have some cannons there and so forth, but if you run a batch of them through, you know, 10, 15 through, they're going to mostly make it to the end. The then you can attack the prisons that these three preservers are in. You can either attack them one at a time, or you can knock them down to pretty close to zero, do the other, do the other, and then take it down quickly, which you might want to do if you are low on Dark Templars, because once you take these down, you'll wake up the hybrid. The hybrid is a detector, and you can whack you. Also, the preserver that's closest to the bridge can be spotted by the enemy base's cannons. At any rate, the reason we want to free the preservers and get rid of that nasty hybrid is because the preservers can read those fragments of the prophecy that Zeratu got in the last mission and tell him what to do, which in this case will be to confuse him enough that he decides to go mind meld with the dead critter. Always a questionable proposition. A great hungerer. Could it refer to the Zerg Overmind? It has a part to They're chatting there about what they've prophecy. already told him about the prophecy. I must seek out the Overmind's final resting place. Our ancient homeworld of Ayr. Huh. I thought you guys were from Sidonia. Level 800 Elite Torrin Chieftain is back with a new album, Pulse Pounding Rock, that will shake the galaxy. Rock out with such hits as Rogues Do It From Behind, Terran Up The Night, Another Hydralis Bites The Dust, Saturday Night's Alright For Nuking, Lucy In The Sky With Mutus, Every Rose Has Its Thor, Touring In Your Galaxy, No! Kurt Hugo Schneider's on that one too. All right, here Zeratul goes to Ayer to have a chat with the dead Overmind. That ought to be fun, to try to better figure out what the Preservers meant about the prophecy. Objectives here include reaching the Nexus, which is trivially simple, bringing Zeratul to each of the Overmind's four tendrils without Zeratul dying, and as extra bonus objectives, powering up two obelisks, which means you find them and put a pylon by each of them, which would also give you some buildings to use. There are achievements if you want to complete them. Uh, get 50 kills on normal or higher by Zeratul. Also finish hard in under 20 minutes. What we're doing is skipping past the first little cinematic part. We're already at the base. We're going to quickly start something to build, but we're not actually going to take time to do the standard approach. The standard approach here would be to build up an army, build and build and build, build an army, put up some photon cannons, get ready for some attacks. When the attacks come, get out there and attack the Nidus worms, void prison them, kill them, whatever. In the meantime, go search for resources. There are a lot of resources. But we're going to do something else. We're just going to use Zeratul right off the bat. Forget the base and the army. If we were a little more elegant, we'd blink in here and then blink out. But this will work. Already. The first overmine tendril. I sense and there's the obelisk you can see right there. Meanwhile, Zeratul's not being attacked because when he's on death. the Overmind Tendril, the attacks stop, and he also pretty much regenerates. Run, Zeratul, run! If we use our observers wisely, we can scout the area before putting ourselves at risk. These warp gates appear to be functional. Perhaps yeah, that's all recording from back of the base. Let's ignore that. And we're already at the second Overmind Tendril. The second Overmind Tendril. I sense 
death and joy. You'll note we're using observers to try to get them ahead so we'll have vision for hopping around. Um, we're going to need to void prison this overseer really quickly. And you can see there are three possible things that can see us with a void prison down. That drops it to two and we're outside of range of both of those. So we'll take this opportunity to whap that spine crawler. Now we're in range of a spore crawler up on the cliff. We are going to have to run. We don't want to spend much time up here. There's a various... Oh, it's dangerous. Let's blink way across, mighty Olympic leap. And boom, we're there. Third tendril. Wow. The third over mine tendril. I sense satisfaction in a plan set in motion long ago. We'll move this a little too and far to the right, but we don't really need this because we're not going to blink here. Of the future. Instead, we're going to immediately try to blink past these Zerglings because they could surround us and just stop us if they did that and then make a run. Not all the way to the fourth tendril because we'd probably get killed well before we got there. But as it happens, once we get down this ramp, there's a little place here with no vision. We can hide right up here, just out of the sight of a spore crawler, and watch Zeratul's shields. They're at zero now. They're going to start climbing, and we won't wait all minute or so for them to get up to 100. But once they're up, we're going to run. We're not going to run straight at that thing because there's a cluster right in the way. We're on a little off to the side, blink in, and boom! In four minutes and 40-some seconds, we nailed all four tendrils. Woohoo! No, we didn't power up any obelisks, but... But you just want to have fun on a speed run, this is something to do. I did not invent this. Other people did this. Here's a map. There's our base. There's the Overmind. There are resources all over this map you can pick up, but there are also a lot of Zerglings. There are Zerglings all over the place. So, back to the ship. Let's see what's on TV. Nuke Noodles, call down the flavor. And on to our final mission. Now, friend Raynor, you must see the Overmind's vision of the future. The end of my people, and of all things. This is our fate, should Kerrigan die. Hmm. Wasn't too long ago we were kind of counting on Kerrigan dying, it seems like. In this mission, though, we get to die. In fact, all the Protoss die. The point is to defend the Archive for 25 minutes and also to kill the requisite number of Zerg, which um, the objective will depend on what level of difficulty you're playing. And eventually you'll get killed off. That's just inevitable. There are achievements for completing the objectives, killing 250 extra Zerg on normal, 750 extra Zerg on um, normal. But basically here, the fun is trying not to get slaughtered for as long as you possibly can. That that's fun. This doodad here in the middle is the um, archive we're protecting. Here's our main base, and out here is the area with the archive, and we're going to be attacked from three directions. Don't even think of going out into Zergland, except that this little base here, sometimes right at the beginning, you can build a base there and get some mining in that high-yield expansion before they find you. There are various things to do here. You have all the buildings you're going to want, except for just a handful. There aren't stargates, but there will be stargates just magically appearing shortly. Um, there's not a robotics bay, a dark shrine, or a templar or archives, if I remember right. Um, you can add those. You can add extra forges and cybernetics cores if you want rapid upgrades. You should be building probes. Um, you should be rallying these units down here. Hot key in your buildings getting a plan and there we have an Air Force coming in these will be um, Phoenixes 
Phoenixes are very important. You can try to blast uh, hybrids with the sheer power of your army, but that's pretty difficult, especially later on. You can use phoenixes quite easily, though, to use the graviton beam to lift them up in the air where they're helpless, and then blast them with other phoenixes or void razor stalkers or whatever. As I planned, my hybrid are proof of this. Now, the last of the Protoss will fulfill their function in death. Oh dear. So, here it comes. And we're certainly going to get hit harder and harder and harder as time goes on. Get hit here, we'll get hit at the top ramp, we'll get hit at the bottom right ramp, and before long we'll get hit from multiple ramps with larger forces. For now it's pretty easy to defend, we can build our forces, we can get some photon cannons across there, we can decide whether maybe we want to wall it instead. Uh, what we want to do, whether we want to get photon cannons in a ring around the um, archive, eventually we're going to want some scattered around our main base area because nidus worms will begin to pop here occasionally. That base under attack thing means we just got an observer popped. Because now they're getting in overseers. We're a little further into the game. Um, and you might want to get more observers out. Because how you can tell where you're going to get hit is by watching the mini-map. You'll see a lot of purple gathering on the ways out from those ramps. And that'll tell you where they're coming from. You really, really, really need to watch the mini-maps. We pot keyed the uh, Air Force there to two. And they were going out to hit some red on the mini-map that were enemy air units hitting the um, photon cannons on the terraces. Now this is a little trick. If you get Dark Templar and you line them up shoulder to shoulder tight so there's no way past, then you tell them to hold. You have to do the hold command, otherwise they'll run around. If there is nothing to see them, if there are no observers, we have to add a couple more there. Let's divert back to what we're doing here. This is where we're going to lift some hybrids and zap them. Back to those High Templar, or those Dark Templar, if you line them up there, nothing can get through them. Even all of these hybrids couldn't get through them if they couldn't see them. That's the trick. If they can't see them, you have to kill off the Overseers. Um, I don't know, I'd bet the farm on that strategy, but it's kind of fun to try. For some reason, I've gotten low, low, low on cannons here, and that's a bad thing. We're also getting near the end of the game. We only have a few more minutes on the Protoss Archive before it will um, retract into the ground to be safe. We've skipped on, retreated to our base to protect it as long as we can. Don't have a base left to protect anymore, though. So, we need to get to 2,000 here on um, hard level to get the achievement. There are a lot of Zerglings there, so let's get over there, lift those hybrids, get them out of the way, and just take advantage of all these many, many, many dozens of Zerglings and kill a gazillion of them. Mind you, we have carriers at this point. Carriers don't make uh, interceptors automatically. You've got to either do it manually or, better yet, autocast. And those interceptors cost money, so you need to save some money so that you can actually use those carriers. They're no good if they just sit there. But you do fall eventually, and after you fall, there's this little cinematic of synchronized ribbon dancing by the hybrids, and that's kind of special. Now, I'll add just a couple of things. Those carriers, we didn't build those. They warped in automatically. And doing a replay on this mission, I noticed that dark spot on the mini-map between the base and the um, gold expansion right there on the left edge. You know, if you fly your air units up there toward the end when they're all that's left, they can't be hit very well by ground units. And that's fun to do if for no other reason than it leaves the hybrids just apoplectic for a while. That's a pretty temporary strategy, though. And then more TV. Hankering for some down-home cooking out there in the space lanes? Come on down to Bubba's Gas and Grub. We got two for Tuesdays, featuring barbecue muta wings. Also, free plasma charge with each villa. Bubba's Gas and Grub, your space trucker home away from home. Yeah. Now take those research points you've earned and go get a whole mess of upgrades. 
know the whole Protoss techie glowy thing started with some Protoss kid in a hut jammed the glow stick into a power outlet. 